Today we are going to talk about stewardship of taxpayers' funds. That is what this hearing is about. It is about being responsible managers. And finally, it is about the credibility of this administration. The bottom line is agencies should have planned better for the sequester. And if the President, the government agencies and the secretaries who head these agencies would spend more time planning and less time with political posturing before the American people with scare tactics about the sequester, we would be better off. Federal agencies have known about the sequester since August of 2011. My grandmother taught me a lot of things, but one thing that sticks with me that I use almost every day is plan for the worst and expect the best. Why didn't our government agencies apply this bit of common sense in dealing with the sequester? Some did, some didn't. Those who didn't could have done some simple things, like rein in bonuses, cut wasteful and frivolous spending, and, as we will learn in the course of this hearing, implement reports of their own IGs to save money. But what have uh, the agencies done instead? They have listened to irresponsible uh, advice. Last summer, the OMB instructed agencies to continue normal spending and operations since more than five months remained before sequester took effect. This was reckless. Sequester was the law of the land then, as it is today. So why didn't agencies at least have a contingency plan? Even our Federal uh, employee unions recognize that agencies did not take sequester seriously. A regional president of the American Federation of Government Employees recently commented, Agencies really haven't done their homework. They are under the illusion that the sequester wasn't going to happen. With the sequester now upon us, some of the administration's spending choices make no sense. The only conclusion I can draw is the President wants to politicize the sequester and make the cuts as painful as possible. Rather than looking for the low-hanging fruit of waste, fraud and abuse, we have furloughs. Rather than keeping the White House open for tours, we have presidential golf outings. And quite frankly, I am appalled the President has thrown the men and women who would take a bullet for him, the Secret Service, under the bus for canceling White House tours. I don't believe for a second that if the President had asked, let's find somewhere else to cut, they would have found plenty of options. Hey, guys, how about looking at the $300,000 annual pay for calligraphers? The President and executive branch agencies are talking furloughs when on the day of the sequester uh, went into effect, these agencies point, uh, uh, posted more than 400 jobs. You know, instead of those calligraphers, Zaf Chancery comes free on every Mac and does pretty nice name tags. Now, I'm also worried about the credibility of the administration. We need to trust our President. But the trust is eroding due to his false rhetoric about the sequester. When President Obama said the janitor and security guard who work here at the Capitol would face pay cuts, the superintendent of the Capitol had to send out an email to employees saying their pay and benefits would be safe. And when the Secretary of Education, Mr. Duncan, said teachers were getting pink slips, the Washington Post awarded him four Pinocchios for this claim. The public is starting to catch on. Politico recently ran an article asking, did President Obama cry wolf about the sequester? And the Chicago Tribune ran an editorial this week headlined, Truth Squaddling the Sequester Hysteria. Officials sabotage themselves when they manipulate, exaggerate and flout common sense. Again, if our agencies would get to work and plan instead of using scare tactics, we would be better off. Well, thank you all for being here. I am looking forward to a productive discussion as we talk about how we are going to manage the sequester.